What is going on, my YouTube friends? How we all doing today? Everyone that supports the Patreon, all our Discord friends. How we all doing, man? It's a beautiful day. Welcome to my kind of messy studio right now. All the lights are on and the windows open so you can kind of see everything, but hey, it's cool. It's cool. I want to take a minute and say thank you for the 50,000 subscribers. What a milestone, man. It just, it fills my heart with such a joyful excitement, I guess we could say. Like, I can't sleep, and that's pretty standard for me, but now it's, like, because I'm excited about this, and I'm nervous about this, and it's just, I can't thank y'all enough, man. Like, I, I haven't felt this way in a long, long, long time, and I, I really owe it all to you guys. I really, really, really do. To celebrate, I wanted to have a little Ask Me Anything, and a few of y'all were so gracious as to hand me off some questions, and so I thought I would go through them, and hopefully y'all can get to know me a little bit better. So let's start from the top. Our first one came from Beth Stratton who's been a recent subscriber and I appreciate you. What ambition you haven't yet achieved would you like to achieve and why? There's a few things that I would like to do. Um, small scale. I have like a vision of what my content will provide. And a part of that is a safe space for people to start their own creating. Because I'm not like so much of a musician and I am proud of myself. I've been practicing lots lately, but I'm more of a technician, right? And I don't think it's that scary to do the things that I do, like mixing or producing or a little bit of recording these things. And I just want to show people that it's safe and it's okay to explore. And there is no right option. Like if you watch 10 of my videos, I might describe the same thing 10 different ways. Like there's a million ways to quote unquote skin a cat. And I just want to show that it's okay to try those things. That's, that's all I want to provide. So I've achieved that in some ways, but I would like for that to be like what goes along with my name, if that makes sense. Like uh, I want to be someone who's excited, determined to being optimistic and providing a safe space for people to create their own art. Like that's all, that's all I want. And so I don't know if that will ever feel like it's been fully achieved, but that's my pursuit anyways. Great question. If you could afford to buy any guitar in the world, whose or which one would you choose? Great question. I'm not super knowledgeable about a lot of guitars. I've owned a lot of guitars. So like I worked at a guitar shop. I was fortunate enough to work at a guitar shop and they trick you by telling you that you can get any guitar you want and they'll just take the payments off your paycheck. <laughs> Yeah, I had a lot of guitars for a little while. Um, I have a Gibson tattoo. I still own a Gibson. I'll never get rid of that guitar. Um, it's my red one that's over on this side. Sometimes it's on the wall. Um, but I would probably get a PRS if money was like no option. I had a purple PRS with a maple neck, and it was so nice. Like, it filled the space of both my telly and all my, my Gibson guitars. I rarely pick the other guitars up. And some of them, like in price points that I don't even pretend to look at. <laughs> Some of those guitars are really, really, really nice. I would recommend checking them out. Paul Reed Smith is really interesting when it comes to his philosophy around guitars too. If you can find a good interview, yeah, there's some really cool ones out there. If you could pick anyone to rock out with, who would you choose? This question kind of got answered in a few different ways, so I'll probably answer it differently each way. Right now, I would probably pick someone like the Foo Fighters with Taylor Hawkins, rest in peace. Um, I was fortunate enough to see them at the same time when Dave had his like rock and roll throne when he broke his foot. And what a show. Like, I don't know how that man can control 40,000 people from a chair and rock out harder than half the people I've seen and work with. Like, it was, it was wild. So I'd probably choose like, you know, primetime Foo Fighters. You know what I mean? I would love that. I would love that. Kylie S., a more recent subscriber as well. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Congratulations on this awesome achievement. Hey, I appreciate that. We'll be at 100K before I know it. Fingers crossed, y'all. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't. 40% of y'all haven't. 40% of y'all haven't. 60% have. I appreciate you. Big numbers, though. Those are big numbers. Uh, what's when, one thing you love about the music industry now and one thing you hate about it? I love the freedom to create and the freedom to collaborate. And when I was in the music industry, I thought, doing music on computers and remote and not being in a room with each other was kind of lame. Like we always were of the mindset of like, okay, you get a cabin for a week, you sit down, you buckle down, you write your songs and then we go into the studio and finish them. Right. And so I thought it was always kind of weird and kind of hokey. I'm not going to lie doing stuff like over zoom and sending each other files and digitally creating stuff. But now I think it's really beautiful. And I think that people who didn't have an opportunity to showcase beautiful art, get that opportunity to showcase beautiful art and like how many creators out there even myself like I don't have the money to be in like a pro studio I don't have the money for all the equipment and stuff but I can do some pretty cool things and I'm really proud of some of the work that I've been able to accomplish because of today's availability for like tools and 
um, connecting online and everything. So I think that's really magical. Um, I also think that it's a uh, music and art and I'm not, this isn't a me quote. I can't remember who said this, but this isn't a me quote. Music and art is the only time where we get to feel our own feelings together. And I really, really, really like that about music. I really like how music does that as an art form, we'll say. Um, the parts I don't like about it are how toxic a lot of it is. Like, you know, you hear lots of the horror stories around record labels and deals and stuff like that. For me, it's a lot of gatekeeping um, people thinking they're better than other people, people talking down to other people, like that stuff is just so toxic. And it's just so contrary to what art stands for in like in my heart. And I just think it's, it's distasteful. Like, at no point, I think it was Henry, Henry Rollins said at a Rolling Stones concert, I think he said, I've fucked up bigger shows than this. And I'll fuck up bigger shows than this late, like, again, I'll do it again. And these crew members are going to be here. They're here before you. They're going to be here after you. They deserve your salary. You deserve theirs. Like, treat them with some respect. And, like, that could not be truer. <laughs> See, I don't like some of the toxic stuff that comes along with the music scene. There's lots of it. Those are just my examples. Fave thing about having a YouTube channel, Patreon, or Discord community. I think it's got to be just having friends available all the time from all walks of life from all over the world because I'm a very extroverted individual but when I go through my hard times I like pull away from the world and I like recluse to myself and like I have a hundred missed phone calls on my phone and like it gets wild sometimes for months and months and months but it seems like I always have somewhere someone with a friendly face or a friendly message to send or to receive and like you can't when that's like sincere and genuine you can't ask for anything better in my, like as an extrovert, you, you can't find anything better than that. And it is weird trying to adjust to like not having humans in a room with you, but that's kind of like the modern thing, right? And if finding all my friends means that I have to be connected to people all over the world, well, then I'll do that because it just means that all my friends don't live where I live and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. For a long time, I thought that that was how you gauged like your success or your personal success or emotional intelligence or anything, but that's not the case. You just got to look a little wider sometimes. Is there a genre of music you don't vibe with or a song or artist that makes you change the radio station if you hear it? Genre of music I don't vibe with? Not really. I don't... I like to be able to understand the vocalist. So sometimes I'll say I don't like screaming vocals, but I do think that there's some people that do it really well. Um, it's like rap. I love rap. I don't like if I can't understand what you're saying, though. <laughs> like, and... I, I like the quick stuff, man. I like when it's intricate and it makes you think about it, but I still got to be able to hear like the words that you're saying that make it quick and intricate, right? So sometimes it comes down to like a sound or a vibe. Um, yeah, as long as like all the parts are there, usually if like the mix is good, then I'm happy with it. Um, songs that, are, that make me change the radio immediately, I got some good ones. Can't stand it, y'all. Can't stand it. I've heard every cover, every rendition. I've heard everything under the sun of that song. It plays on the radio 30 times a day. I can't do it anymore. I can't do it anymore. Same thing, y'all. That's enough. Even just that's enough. <laughs> Jim Rock Crew, what's up? Hey, shout out to our friend Jim Rock Crew. Gave me the inspiration for this. She just did an AMA on her channel. Uh, great channel too. I'll have it pinned in the in the description box down below. Go check her out, man. Great channel. Great channel. Such a cute kitty. Has a new friend. Yeah, Eddie's my best friend. My best friend. Who's one musician, dead or alive, you'd love to jam with? See, this is where like the conversation switches a little bit because band I'd love to jam with, Foo Fighters. Artist I'd like to jam with. Great question. Great question. Maybe like an Angus Young in his prime or like a Chuck Berry, rest in peace. Um, someone like where they had bitey guitars that were just big and in your face. And that's like how they talked. And I just, I vibe with that, man. That's what got me into playing guitars. That's what got me into picking the tones that I like. Like I would say like right now in my mood right now, one of those two. Meritrix. Hope I'm saying that right. Zero six. Have you listened to the instrumental versions of the warning songs? Every the warning fan has got to check out this channel. I have not. I wonder, is there acapellas too? Start with the error album. I'm into it. I'm into it. I can do that. 
Am is one of our beautiful moderators, y'all. Been around for a long, 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 long time. Congratulations. Pick one or however many you like. Deal. You got it. Uh, what would you like to be known or remembered for? Um, I think like I just want to be remembered as being optimistic and just liking things, encouraging you to like things. I love love. I, I love encouraging love. Like those things. I just want to be remembered with like a smile on your face. That's all. That's all I could ask for. Um, what is your superpower? Great question. Great question, y'all. I want to say something cool like ADHD or something along those lines. But I think what it is is my left knee I've beat up over the years. And now it swells up on the left side. I get this little like tiny like swollen bubble um, before it rains. So I usually know when it's going to rain. And it's like, it's one of those things where I feel it and I'm like, Ooh, I bet you it's going to rain, but I don't want to say anything in case I'm wrong. I should start writing it down or like texting someone. But anyways, anyways, I'm going to say that that's what my superpower is. Um, you recently mentioned being in a vortex in your reaction video. What words of advice would you give to others experience the same thing? Um, I didn't, uh, I didn't come up with that word. Another moderator of ours, Elizabeth, said that, and I just thought it was very fitting. And that's a great question. Being someone who is also feeling like they're still in the vortex, um, I heard a podcaster say that he was tired of the simulation. And I thought, ooh, that's kind of interesting. So I would recommend interfering with your cycle and prioritizing something that refills your glass. Because if you interject like a habit or a pattern or a daily cycle or whatever with more work, then you're going to feel like you're stuck in that vortex and the, and the simulation isn't going to get any friendlier. But like if you have like a hobby or like a something you want to learn, a skill or like a craft you want to work on, I would say interject, find an important time of your day or of that cycle whenever it happens, if it's in the morning, if it's at night, and uh, just in interject it. Steer yourself off course with something that fills your heart. That's what I would recommend. That's what I'd recommend. Gardening season's coming, y'all. <laughs> how long would you last in a zombie apocalypse not very long i think i'd be like i'd be fine if all the like stores shut down i can grow the stuff i can figure that out i can cook i can take care of myself if i had to like live on the land for a little while but the minute they start come knocking i don't want to deal with it i don't want to deal with it i'm not going to be the guy with like some great shot i'm not going to be hawkeye like taking care and cleaning up the neighborhood nah man i'll be out i'm just out count me out uh, what is your ultimate go-to music song album for when you really just want to jam? That's a great question. That is a really great, great question. I like when I pick up my guitar and I feel like I need to let something out. I always go to this live version of a Rolling Stones cover of Under My Thumb by a band called Street Heart, who's from Canada, who I fell in love with at a really early age. My mom had seen them when she was a teenager and she loved them. So she introduced me to them just kind of like by accident, just playing them around the house. And I love their sound. I love their vocalist. And then later I was fortunate enough to work with them. Oh man, I don't even know how many times, 20 plus times being like a stage manager, like working monitors, lights, stuff like that, like around the concerts, right? And I had met them. I've got a couple of them on Facebook. Kenny Shields passed away recently, rest in peace. Um, and that just that life that live version gives me life and i always go to that one i always pick up that one put my headphones in turn it up way too loud and i learned jeff neal's solo through and through as best as i can play it and it just that's where i go when i need to like let out through my guitar that's that's definitely the one i would recommend checking it out i'll put it in the description box too tw monty hey what's up twa what's up the warning army what's up what's up what's up what was the last band you saw live Great question. I think it was Bruno Mars in DC with my friend Betty, who I miss very much. And I owe a phone call from aforementioned Vortex. Um, but I think that was it. I think that was it. Before that, I think it was a local band. And then, yeah, I don't really remember. I don't really recall. We've gone to a couple like acoustic performances, but nobody like, I don't want to say nobody noteworthy because around town, like they're good, but uh, like nobody that y'all would know or that have like a YouTube or anything. Top five current bucket list artists or band to see live um there's a lot there's a lot of the artists that i react to now that i would love to see live because i've really fallen in love with their like live performances um 21 pilots angelina jordan um the warning to name a couple i've been fortunate enough like i said like bruno mars and silk sonic were two that i was like i was 
desperate, desperate to, to see, man. And like I put the the ask out to God and he responded. The beautiful person named Betty. That that's a whole thing. So I've seen those two. It's a great question. It's a really great question. I don't really know who I would pick on top of that. I've been really fortunate, y'all. I've seen some really cool concerts. Um, I saw Iron Maiden uh, when I was 16. Motley Crue was my first concert. Like these are all monumental bands for me, right? I'd probably like to see, I would like to see a Beyonce concert with my eyes. I think that it would be a spectacle. Um, maybe someone else like big budget too, maybe like a Lady Gaga, something like that, something like that. Yeah, there'd be a few. But like it would be, for me, it's not so much about going to see the music for whatever reason, like, con like I've done and I've worked at so many concerts that like live loud sound, like I, I love the energy, but like I've seen most of the bands that I want to see. It's just like, it would have to be for like the entire environment, the entire thing, right? Like I want to see the whole stadium come to life. Like that's what I'm there for, right? That's the energy that would light me up. And where did the name BEL development come from? So I actually don't know where that started because I find old hard drives of mine and I find old like notes and little business plans of mine from things that I've tried to start. And for a long time, it was BE. And I don't remember where that came from. Something to do with nutrition. It wasn't better eating. That'd be too easy. It was like it was an acronym, something to do with nutrition and lifting weights and stuff. Um, and then fast forward to when I started my YouTube channel here, uh, I wanted an umbrella originally to start and under that umbrella i could have like a few different like facets right and what that came from was when i was the most depressed i had been and the most kind of down and struggling i had ever been i found that my habits had fallen off and i was blaming myself for that and then i was blaming myself for having adhd and so i was working on ha like building these habits right and building engagement through habits and motivation and consistency and i wanted to share that right? It was like a, a challenge of executive function. But I soon like quickly found out that I couldn't deliver the advice I wanted to because I couldn't build the thing like I didn't know how to get the camera right and the audio right and the mic right. And the irony isn't lost on me because I'm an audio guy. But like recording in studios and stuff is so different than analog consoles and hardware. And um, so bright and engaged lifestyles or living is where it started BEL. And that was going to branch into bright engaged listening. I was going to do my music thing. I was going to do, well, now we're going to do like um, uh, the lifestyle side would be like our homesteading with our farm and our garden. Um, and I don't know, man, I'm pretty happy with that. Like music has been a passion of mine longer than I can remember. And I've got that thing and I'm working on that and I'm building my own little kind of corner of that. And I want to be able to help other artists and producers and everything. And I've got this beautiful opportunity with my fiance on this, like we rent an acreage and we've got a huge garden that we work on and we're getting chickens. And I guess it comes back to that. Like, I just want to show that it's okay to like do things for yourself and to do good for yourself. And yeah, I don't know. It's it, that, that could probably be a whole conversation on its own, but um, I'm not too sure where the original, original origins came from. It's kind of like more a synchronicity of it being B E and now being B E L and I am kind of interested where it's going to go from there. If we add to the acronym or not. Um, but yeah, so bright and, bright and engaged living or lifestyles and bright and engaged listening for the music side. And because like, I do want to start doing, I do want to start offering some like listening sessions or like, uh, like focus listening, I guess, where we can go through, okay, like, you know, this is the things that I'm listening for. This is what they sound like. Let's see if you can hear it. Let's see if you can point it out, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I just want to show that it's not that scary, y'all. That's all. I was really scared for a long time. I was really afraid of a lot of things outside of this. And uh, it just took me kind of like getting through it, building habits, building patterns to support myself, support my mental, support my heart. And from that being okay with moving forward, right? So... Yeah, it's a long-winded way of where the channel name came from. I appreciate everyone who contributed to this, and I appreciate everyone who supported me over the last couple of years. 50,000, y'all. It feels weird to say. It feels super weird to say. <laughs> but from the bottom of my heart, y'all, I love you so much. Everyone out there, keep your chins up. You deserve it. We'll see you again soon.